Welcome. It seems now in April to be a most appropriate time to play a piece called The Winter's Past. Although we know we might still see a few snowflakes here in Buffalo, but spring is definitely in the air. The American composer Wayne Barlow lived from 1912 to 1996, and although he was born in Ohio, he lived most of his life very close to us in Rochester, New York. He attended the Eastman School of Music, studying with the legendary Howard Hansen. And when he graduated in 1937 with a PhD in music, he became the very first person in the entire United States to ever receive a doctorate in composition. He joined the Eastman School composition faculty and became chair of that department until he retired in 1978. We are playing his most beloved composition, The Winter's Past. A beautiful pastoral piece for strings and oboe, giving us a chance to enjoy the beautiful voice of oboist Henry Ward. Next comes Bernstein's violin concerto, his serenade. Now, perhaps this is not his best known work, but it is the one that he himself called his most satisfying composition. I think it's perhaps his greatest piece of music, and we are so happy to perform it for you. Perhaps we're introducing many of you to this wonderful piece for the first time. It's not often played for couple of reasons. First of all, it's extremely difficult for the soloist. Even the great Yasha Heifetz, who played everything, refused to play this piece. So it was premiered by Isaac Stern in 1954. It's also very difficult for the orchestra, which is comprised of strings and percussion, uh, very challenging parts. And of course, there's that rather daunting title, Serenade After Plato's Symposium. When I first encountered this piece in the beginning of my time at the conservatory, I was a bit frightened by it. I was really thought to myself, this must be a very serious piece. But actually, it isn't. It is a totally charming, delightful piece based on the most universal of topics, love. Bernstein sets this piece in 416 BC at the home of the philosopher Socrates. Socrates has assembled his handful of students around him. That was his way of teaching. And among them is Aristocles. Today we know Aristocles as Plato. That was his nickname, which actually meant tubby. But Plato is there uh, in the class and a few years later, he wrote a description of this particular class, and that greatly inspired Bernstein. Socrates always liked to teach by posing a question to the students. And he asked, in this case, each one of them to tell him what love is. We hear their answers in the five movements of the piece. In the first movement, Phaedrus cautiously describes love as the mightiest of the gods, praising her purity and loveliness. But he is interrupted by his classmate, Posanos, who explains that one must discriminate between the two faces of the goddess, spiritual love and erotic love. The second movement, Aristophanes, tells a fairy tale about the mythology of love, the persistent physical craving of human creatures for each other. You can hear Bernstein's love motif, the violas following after the cellos in a love pursuit. The third movement, Eryximathos, a physicist, talks about the science of love, the chemistry of love. He speaks very quickly and ends abruptly. The fourth movement, Agathon. This is a beautiful flowering rhapsody where Agathon expresses that love is the source of everything that is beautiful in life. Finally, in the fifth movement, Socrates speaks and he presents 
his definition, which is profound and surprising. He describes love as poor, needy, and endlessly searching, but capable of lifting man from the bonds of the earth to the vision of the face of God. There's a sudden knock on the door. All of a sudden, they're interrupted by Alcibiades and a group of drunken friends who insist that class time is over and now it's time for a drink. And then we just end with a Grecian party scene that, in Bernstein's view, could fit right in with West Side Story. An amazing piece of music. And we have an amazing soloist, Blake Puglio, a great virtuoso visiting us this week. We hope you will enjoy this incredible performance. We end with a gorgeous piece by Ottorini Respighi, his Botticelli triptych. Respighi was a 20th century composer, but he loved to look backwards for inspiration. He was not interested in the polytonality of Stravinsky, not interested in the new 12-tone technique of Schoenberg or the unusual tonal vocabulary of Debussy. He found his world in the pages of Italian history. He was profoundly moved by Italy's artistic, literary, and historical past. And he's both a classicist and a romantic. He's romantic in his feeling for the poetic imagery and for the sights and sounds of a country he deeply loved. And he is a classicist in his reference for the forms and techniques of the past. But he revitalized these, creating a music that is fresh and new in his world of rich harmonies and beautiful orchestral garb. His strong interest in Italian art led him to the great Renaissance painter Sandro Botticelli, where Spighi actually had a lifelong love affair with the Renaissance. He repainted three of Botticelli's masterpieces on a sonic canvas, using music to create rich, translucent textures, gorgeous melodies, polish, sophistication, and sensuality. These are the three paintings you will see in Respighi's music. Here is Botticelli's Spring. In Respighi, it becomes filled with ecstatic trills, lively horn calls, a dance-like quality of joy and vivid color. Next, his adoration of the Magi. Botticelli painted a gentle landscape of the shepherds coming to the stable at Bethlehem on the day of Christ's birth, and Respighi filled it with the rhythms of the Siciliana. That is the music that the shepherds played to their flocks. He creates a timeless musical portrait of both serenity and ecstatic wonder. Last is the birth of Venus where Spighi recreates Botticelli's delicate colors in flute and clarinet floating above murmuring strings. The beauty of Venus is expressed in music of shimmering eloquence that finally fades into quiet stillness. A beautiful trip to Thanks for being with us and happy spring to all of you from the Buffalo Philharmonic Musicians and me. <laughs>